John McMullen from 97.3 ESPN.com. You know John joins us every day at this time. Uh, we're going to get the latest. He's got five position battles to watch. I'm really intrigued by the article at 97.3 ESPN.com because uh, it seems like there's a lot of position battles out there. John's got five of them that are jumping out to him, and there's something that I want to get into as well. Uh, we talked to Derek Gunn earlier, Pete, about Lane Johnson. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get John's take on that as well. And, uh, of course, John joins us now on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. John, you got position battles, but you've got some under-the-radar ones that I think are really good to look at. And one of the things when you look at position battles is sometimes position battles make good stories. But how much is the winner going to play? And that is what uh, some of these position battles come into here. And uh, I think you got an interesting one to start off, Chris Pantel against Dylan Gordon. I don't know that Dylan Gordon's name has been brought up, but why is he a part of this position battle? Well, I think, as I said, that's more of a, a back end of the roster battle. Who do you want to keep? Do you want to keep the fourth tight end who can play fullback, or do you want to keep the guy... Uh, with upside, a big six foot five, three hundred twenty pound guy who played tight end at LSU, and the Eagles have tried him at guard. They've tried him at tackle, and they've used him at fullback in short yardage goal line situations uh, a lot in practice. And I think a lot of people look at Jason Peters and what he was when he came into this league. He was a tight end. He was an undrafted tight end. And, and he had such great athleticism. Uh, he put on weight, and, and he developed into a borderline Hall of Fame left tackle. So uh, I think we're a long way away from that with Dylan Gordon, but I think some people look at his ceiling as a player and say, hey, maybe we have to find a way uh, to keep this guy around because of what he might develop into in the future. So. Uh, I use that one as an example. Those are some of the tough decisions you have to make because do you want to keep the guy who can possibly help you more today or do you want to keep the guy that's got a much, much higher ceiling down the road? And that's sort of the the conundrum every coach in this league has to deal with when they cut down to 53. And, uh, you know, you look at uh, Dylan Gordon, who's really an offensive lineman, you know, and and they put him in the backfield, uh, who was – you know, pretty impressive there. Uh, but you, you wonder if Dylan Gordon actually adds more than Chris Pantel, who's going to be a fourth tight end. Yeah, I mean, you can argue. Uh, you can make the argument, at least, and that's why I think it's there. And and uh, the thing about Pantel is he, he's been the guy who's been the fullback. So uh, when the Eagles do use a fullback, and, and it's not all that often, uh, but when they do, he's been the guy. Now, while you say that, you can shift that to Trey Burton to get him on the field a little bit more. Uh, I, I don't think any of them have proven themselves as a lead blocker to the point where you say, hey, this guy's Daryl Johnson in his prime. Uh, but the Eagles want that formation in their offense, and they want to play a fullback at times. So. Uh, I still think Chris Pantelli is likely going to be on this team because of his versatility and his ability to move in the backfield and also play H-back and Y-back. So that's a very valuable commodity to have. And, and we've talked about it in the past because of the lack of success of the wide receiver group. Uh, the Eagles are going to have to lean a little bit more on that tight end group. All right, let's look at the next one because uh, this one I think is interesting. Marcus Smith, the former first-round pick. Steven Means, another guy that I don't know unless you're following your stuff day-to-day and really paying attention, you might not even know who that is, where he came from. Is Marcus Smith really in danger of losing a spot on this roster? I I don't think he is. A lot of people do. I can tell you I talked to a lot of other reporters, and they think Means is going to make this team because he's played better uh, than Marcus Smith, and he showed up when he's been given an opportunity. And when Smith was down with the concussion, Means really flashed, and, and, he, and he caught a lot of people's eyes. And Jim Schwartz even mentioned it. But if you listen to Jim, he, he raves all the time about Marcus Smith's athletic ability. And, and I just think he's very intrigued uh, by what he can bring to this defense if he can tap into it. Uh, and I don't think he's given up on that. 
and, and you talk about a guy who's got uh, the skill set to be a first-round pick. You can argue he's a bust, what have you. You can argue the Eagles reach for him. But he was still a pretty talented kid, even if you'd rated him as a second-round pick. So uh, I think Jim sees that. He talks about it often. He talks about his athleticism. He talks about his defense. And he's got a lot fewer responsibilities than he did as a linebacker in the 3-4. His responsibility now is basically go get the quarterback. And if there's one thing Marcus Smith can do, it's go straight ahead uh, and get around the edge. So I, I think Jim, as I said, is intrigued by that, and I don't think he's going to give up on it at this point. John, do you think Marcus Smith has talent? I mean, does he have the ability to help at all? Well, he's got talent. I mean, everybody in the NFL has got talent. I, I, that's just the reality of the situation. I mean, you're – if you're on an NFL roster, you're good. It's just a matter of are you good against the other NFL players. And obviously to this point, he's not been. You can't argue that. Uh, but I, I think he was playing out of position under Chip Kelly. Uh, and he's not a read-and-react player. He had trouble uh, sort of uh, keying and diagnosing, and that's what you're required to do in a two-gap system. Now he's in a one-gap system. Uh, whereas I said, it basically has one job. Jim Schwartz points at the quarterback and says, go get him. And the one thing Marcus Smith has is speed, athleticism, and, and, and that's the strength of his skill set, and that's what he hopes to utilize. John McMullen's with us. We're talking five position battles to watch for the Eagles as they get ready to play that all-important third preseason game on Saturday night against Indianapolis. And, of course, you can hear that right here on 97.3 ESPN-FM. Now, about the linebacker position, John, you write about them and uh, write about uh, Quinton Gauze versus Mike Tavares. Of course, Stephen Tullock, the name on everybody's mind right now, but that's what puts those two guys in your mind into the uh, battle position battle. Yeah, I mean, you got to have six, and, and Tulloch makes five when you add uh, Jordan Hicks, Michael Kendricks, Nigel Bradham, Najee Good, Tulloch would make five. So you have one spot left over uh, for the two undrafted rookies. And uh, Mike Tavares came in uh, with a big signing bonus for, for an undrafted guy. He got $90,000, and for people who don't know, that's a heck of a lot of money for an undrafted player. Uh, the second most in the entire NFL for undrafted players. Uh, Quentin Gauze came in. I think he got 10000 as a comparison. Uh, but he's outplayed Tavares to this point. Uh, and any time you're talking about the sixth linebacker on the team, you're going to have to play special teams. And that's what it's going to come down to with these two players. And Gauze has shown up more uh, to this point, I think the winner uh, is going to be on the roster. As I said, the loser is probably earmarked for the practice squad. So I think they're both going to be around still. Uh, but I think Goss at this point is outplayed to Boris. And then staying at linebacker, John, what are the chances that they look outside the organization and what are the chances that there's somebody available for them to bring from somewhere else? There's a possibility, no question. Uh, and there's going to be people available. There's no question about that because everybody's got to get down to to 53. And as we stand today, uh, the cut to 75 hasn't even happened yet. So there's going to be a lot of guys flooding the street uh, before September 3rd uh, when when that cut down is. So there's going to be a lot of, of waiver wire pickups and I think the Eagles are going to be one of the more active just because they don't have a lot of depth and, and linebackers one of those positions I think wide receivers still one of those positions uh, so I, I think they're going to be active and there's a possibility if they like someone uh, sure there's they could pick them up on waivers but remember when you pick up on waivers at the very last moment, obviously they don't know your system. Uh, they're behind the eight ball. You have to bring them in. They have to learn. You have to get them up to speed. Uh, and if you pick them up on waivers, you got to put them on the 53-man roster. So uh, you have to weigh all of that against guys who have been here the entire offseason, 
they've been with the new defensive coordinator. They understand what their role is. So all that plays into it. But right. any team is always looking to add talent, and the Eagles are, are one of the top teams on that list. John, uh, before we move to your next position battle, there were some reports the Eagles uh, are looking to move or some, see if there's any takers for Taylor Hart. Now, some people crassly would say, who would want him? Remember, this is a team that just got Doriel Green Beckham for uh, Dennis Kelly. So is that the kind of deal that uh, Howie Roseman's trying to pull off again, just trying to find a change of scenery type of high ceiling guy? Well, I, I hey, he would love that. Uh, I don't know if he can pull that off again, but I certainly think Taylor Hart's worthy of a, a, a late-round pick, and there's a possibility they could move him for something of that nature, be the sixth or seventh-round pick. And there are teams in this league that are desperate uh, for defensive line help, uh, and and he's more of a five-technique guy. He's more of a three-four guy. So who knows? They could reunite him with Chip Kelly, although. Uh, how he probably doesn't want to do business with Chip. Uh, you never know. I, I think they'll be able to get something for Taylor Hart, to be honest with you. Uh, and it's pretty clear that Mike Martin is in their plans after the way Doug spoke about him. Even though he's missed the entire preseason, he's going to miss the game against the Colts. He's earmarked to be the backup uh, to Fletcher Cox. Bo Allen's going to be the backup to Benny Logan. And that leaves Taylor Hart on the outside looking in. So uh, if they can get something for him, even if it's a seventh-round pick, it's it's certainly a worthwhile trade. John, one of your position battles, and this always seems to be the position that I end up asking about, but it's at the kicker and uh, Cody Parkey versus Caleb Sturgis. And we know what happened to Caleb out in Pittsburgh, but uh, what about that position battle? Yeah, I mean, I think that one's done. I, I think Caleb has just blapped him. In, the, in that race, he, he's totally out kicked him throughout uh, camp, throughout practices, in, in the preseason games. And as I mentioned, the only reason we're still talking about it is because he got the concussion when Donnie Jones tried to take him out. I say that jokingly because people have speculated that Cody uh, paid Donnie. Uh, to sort of take jail about but, uh, he. Yeah, I mean, he's totally out to Cody Parkin. It hasn't been close. So uh, that would be one of the greatest upsets ever if the Eagles chose Cody Parkey. And if they do, it, it's got to have something to do with the fact that they don't feel he's still 100% back from the core muscle injuries because he just hasn't been the same guy. And, and he's last time... We've been keeping a, a, a running uh, total of the kicks in practice that we've been able to see. And, and the, at the last point, Caleb had missed three the entire uh, summer, and, and Cody was up over 10 in double digits. So it hasn't been close. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com. Read his piece on the five position battles. We're taking a look at them, and then. Uh, you know, the wide receiver, you got Givens versus Randall, but there's probably some other guys in there. Or do you think they are the two guys that are in the biggest, uh, you know, deepest trouble right now? Yeah, I think those guys are fighting for a roster spot and they're fighting for the same one. That's why I put there. I agree with you. They're both better than Josh Huff. Uh, they're both better than Paul Turner. Uh, but Josh Huff is going to make this team because he's a kickoff returner. Uh, and, and, and Paul Turner comes down do you want to keep five receivers or do you want to keep six? If you want to keep six, you're doing that to keep Paul Turner around. Uh, so to me, uh, Chris Givens and Reuben Randall are fighting for the same spot because Jordan Matthews is given, Nelson Aguilar is a given, Doriel Green Beckham is a given. Uh, so all of a sudden it comes down to who's going to be winning that final roster spot and, it, and, and it's Randall versus Gibbons. Randall's a better player, and I don't even think it's close. Uh, but there's other issues, and, and the fact that he's got that sort of laissez-faire attitude, he takes plays off at times. I think it, 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 he gets the coaching staff angry at him. He gets his teammates angry at him. You saw it in New York with the Giants. You heard the same kind of things about him. It's come to fruition here. And Chris Gibbons, 
give you something you don't have with the rest of those guys, and that's a true deep threat. Plus, you add into the fact that he's got a history of Sam Bradford, and, and the third for me, which which is the reason I give Gibbons the advantage, is, is the fact that he can play a little bit on special teams. And I don't think Randall can. Talking with John McMullen here, 97.3 ESPN.com. Uh, Eagles and Colts, it's this Saturday night. You can listen to the game at 6 o'clock coverage on 97.3 ESPN, your home for Eagles football. And, you know, John, uh, I got a chance to catch up with Trent Cole today. I'll have that interview coming up right after you. Uh, full disclosure, I recorded it earlier, but uh, so I know what he said. And, uh, you know, he really kind of talked about the differences. Um, and one of the things that stood out to me, is he kind of made it a point about how much the Colts organization cares about their health and their bodies. I I found that to be kind of interesting considering, you know, the whole sports science and the smoothie shakes. And, you know, he kind of – and he brought it up multiple times that, oh, they really care about your health and your body here. They really care about your well-being. It kind of sounded like he was trying to make it known that uh, the last couple of years that that wasn't something that was really, uh, you know, taken was was a high priority. Well, yeah, he's hardly the first veteran player to take a shot at Chip Jelly, and he's not going to be the last. Uh, and you're going to hear the same thing from San Francisco once they get to it in a couple of years. I, I mean, the veteran player, Jason Peters, destroyed Chip Kelly the first time he talked in training camp. Uh, and about the way he handled veteran players. And there's just pretty much no common sense to it, was, was the argument with Jason Peters. And, and the rest of the NFL, for the most part, and, and we've talked about it in the past, has things called veteran days. Doug has them. Most NFL coaches have them. And they're just a little bit smarter with how they handle guys that have a lot of tread off the tire. Uh, Chip is interesting. It's ironic because he is so much into the, the sports science, and he is into nutrition more than the average NFL coach. So on one hand, uh, he wants you to sleep nine hours a night. He, he wants you to take care of your body. Uh, and then on the other end of the uh, spectrum, uh, he doesn't pay attention to 33, 34-year-old players that have taken a beating. And he just it treats them like a 21-year-old coming out of college. So it is ironic, and it is strange that a guy who's supposed to pay so much attention to detail doesn't differentiate between young legs and, and guys who've been around for a while. But certainly people like Trent Cole, people like Jason Peters, even people like Lane Johnson, they've all talked about Chip Kelly and, and the fact that he doesn't know how to handle veteran players when it comes yeah. to that. And, and it was a big criticism. He said he'd rather be a 4-3 defensive end, but uh, that he would have done anything they asked from him. You'll hear that interview coming up here in just a few minutes on the Sports Bash. Trent Cole, former Eagle, now Colt, which, you know, th- they probably would have got rid of him if they had anybody else that was half competent, right? I mean, he's the kind of guy at 33, they told him to cut his salary, uh, but he probably would have been gone out there if they could have found anybody that could rush the passer. Yeah, I mean, Trent obviously is uh, on the descent in his career, and he was a heck of a player here for a very long time. Uh, but, there, you know, he can help. He knows how to rush the passer. In a lot of ways, he's like Dwight Green. Uh, if you remember last year, uh, Dwayne Creaney didn't sign until midway through the season. He goes into Arizona. He's the best pass rusher they got. The year before, the same thing happened with San Diego. Uh, this year he's with Atlanta. But uh, people don't – when they see that 33, 34 years old in this league, people just assume – that guys can't play anymore. Sometimes it's true. Right. Most of the time it's true. Sometimes it's not. I, I think Trent can still help, but obviously you have to limit his reps. He can't play 60, 70 snaps a game. He's got to be a, a 20, 25 snap a game guy, and it, he's got one job, and that's to go get the, the quarterback. John McMullen, everybody, don't forget, at JF McMullen on Twitter, 97.3ESPN.com, every day for his Eagles Insight. 
Uh, don't forget his national coverage as well uh, at today's Pigskin and every day at 4.05 on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Our Eagles content today is brought to you by J.C. Motorsports. Don't forget to check them out, J.C. Motorsports NJ. Dot com. John, you're the best, man. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care, John. Hey, thank you, guys.